Hello, good afternoon, guys. Welcome to another DW live show. Um, every Tuesday at 1.30 in this series of 10. This is episode number five. Can you believe it? Wow. So we've got a fantastic show coming up today. We are going to be speaking to Pauline Kwasniak, um, social media and marketing expert, who's going to be giving us some expertise on um, content marketing masterclass. Now, I am personally so excited for this. One, because it's a subject I'm really interested in. Two, I've seen the slides and they look like they're going to be fantastic. I'm going to learn loads. So it's going to be really interesting, guys. So um, get your pens and paper ready. Tell your friends and, um, yeah, join in with this show. And, of course, as usual, you know, we're on Facebook uh, Live. We're also on YouTube. So you can send in your questions all the way through for me or for Pauline. And we'll try and get through as many as we can, like, on the, on the way. We're also... Um, you know, at the end as well, we'll try and get into some, and then we'll 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 post up any information um, about the show afterwards in the wrap up. So any links or important things that you need to know about. So uh, as usual, big thanks to Stream for uh, Callum and and Dom for putting this show on for us. They do a great job every week. Um, big thanks to Events Case for the registration, and then moving on to our season sponsors, we are so happy to be working with our good friends at Eventer. Um, Andy Leverland is here again with another video for us. So, guys, I hope you um, you can take this in, take some information from it because they're doing some really good things. So, here we go with the video. Over the past few weeks, we've been showcasing the various features of the on-air portal by Events Air, and I'm excited to give you all a preview of the latest development that is not only a much sought after feature by our clients, but also takes events to the next level. Welcome to the On Air 3D Month. What we want to create here is an engaging and immersive experience that moves your audience away from the notion of just another Zoom webinar to something unique and focused on the target audience. All the relevant information is accessible via your own AirTouch panel which acts as your personal guide and access portal. If we click on the auditorium, it will take us through to the full list of events and from there, we'll take you through to the viewing area to watch that particular session. Hello everyone, good morning, hi, and welcome to this Managing Events in a Changing World virtual event. Clicking on Meetings will take you to the Meeting Hub where all attendees can message, text or video chat, and schedule meetings with each other. And then going into the exhibition hall gives you the full experience of browsing the booths and starting one-to-one -one conversations with those that are of interest. We have created a library of images and options to choose from that should cover all event types but each element can be customised to fit individual needs. So big thank you to Andy and the team at Eventer for all the great work they're doing. And they're going to be with us until uh, the end of this season. So thanks a lot, guys. So thank you once again, everybody, for joining us. Don't forget to send in your questions. I'm going to say a few quick hellos to everybody. You know, and also something I always forget every week is um, welcome to the people who might not know who the Delegate Wranglers are. You know, we're on, we're a Facebook group. We're a community for the event industry. So if you're not already a member, um, head over to Facebook, search on the Delegate Wranglers, and you can apply to join up with us. And we'd love to have you on board. So um, quick hello to a few people. Felicity Berry, how are you? Rob, Jan, as usual, Jan, member of the DW Live Show panel. Look out for another fantastic um, um, <laughs> bit of info from her later on. We've got Sarah, Sarah on. Hi, Sarah. We've got Lisa. Um, lots of people in there. Lisa Sweeting. And also people from all over the world. We've got somebody from Surrey, somebody from Spain, uh, somebody from Berkshire on YouTube. So, yeah, big welcome to you all. Thanks for joining. So, without any further ado, we will get into it. I would uh, like to offer a very warm welcome to Pauline. Hello, Pauline, how are you? Hello, Neil, how are you? And hello, yeah. everybody. 
Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. I've been looking forward to the show, as I said. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, so it, just for everybody as well, it will be on YouTube afterwards, so you, you will be able to watch it there as well. So, Pauline, do you want to tell us a bit about your experience, um, how you got into doing what you're doing, and kind of what you're up to at the moment? Yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, so I started in marketing roughly 10 years ago. At the beginning, it was more hosting and modeling, but already I was able to learn about the events and um, marketing industry. And then I went into the events industry with uh, venue sourcing and organizing and promoting events. But I realized that what really, really excited me about the industry was promoting, promoting great events, promoting destinations, and that I did enjoy it way more than actually organizing events, would you believe? Um, and then I progressed into digital marketing. So this is what I do at the moment. I launched some startups in between. I advise startups. So I've done loads. But if there was one word to define me, I would always say marketeer. Marketeer, yeah. And uh, you, you know, you you build up that experience, don't you? And you know what kind of works for you and things like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm your mate as well. I'm one of those people. I'm, you know, I like marketing as well. So. Anyway, so thank you so much. You're going to tell us, uh, do you want to give us a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about and then go straight into your um, into your slides, please? That'd be great. Absolutely. So um, we wanted this masterclass to be about B2B content marketing strategy and how to use content in order to drive warm traffic, cold traffic, use content in your sales funnels. And of course, we're going to talk about the social media, the Instagram, but everything really for the event profs and mice industry, very B2B content strategy. And it's for both sides, isn't it, really? It's not just for, you know, the sales side. It's also for event professionals promoting their events or themselves as companies as well. Absolutely. Um, you can have uh, your own page and you could be promoting yourself as a personal brand, but it is still a business brand yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Fantastic. OK, so do you want to um, I know you've got a few slides to show with us. I'm going to talk while you're getting that ready because <laughs> I know you have to jump, go through a few hoops to get it. Here we go. So over to you, Pauline. Thank you very much. So again, a very, very warm welcome to everybody. My name is Pauline, as Niall said, and I am a marketeer. I also have uh, or started an event female uh, planners uh, community over on Instagram. And at the moment, I'm also involved with Fine Deeds. Uh, Fine Deeds is a startup that aims to digitalize uh, what charities are doing and connect charities with volunteers. At the moment, we have um, people in Ireland and UK. And you might know uh, a very good friend of yours, uh, Dan Atkins from Bosses uh, for Homeless. He's there as well. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So we just want to grow that and connect as many people as possible to create a ripple effect of goodness. Fantastic. Um, so that's about me. And um, let's start with, you know, talking about a niche, okay? Because so many people, when they want to do a content marketing strategy, what you need to do at the very, very beginning is you need to really define your niche. And if I ask people about, do you have your niche? Do you know your niche? People say yes, and then I say, well, really? Because travel is not a niche enough. Solo female backpacking on a budget travel is a niche. So think about this example here. If you had a, a travel agency or if you were a travel influencer yourself, you would sort of be lost in a sea. Um, you need to sort of stand out and really, really know your niche. Female solo backpacking on the budget, that is so much better than travel alone. So, you know, maybe we should um, Anil, run uh, the first poll. Yeah, uh, just, just posted to it ask up. People. Lovely. Yeah. So, tell me, do you honestly feel right now that you have a clear and well defined niche at the moment where you can give better value than others? Let's see. Let's see what you say. I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> you do. You, you, you do. But that, that I know for sure. <laughs> I try. I feel like I did, you know, with female event planners, like we're really, really uh, focused. We have a niche yeah. ourselves as well. I'm going to tell you the results. Um, they, they will show in a second, but it's 50-50 uh, at the moment. 
yeah okay so you know take a piece of paper you don't have to do it now but just write it down i would like you when we finish this training maybe i would like you to sort of write a few um core or key elements that you have to your business that you that you feel are better that you're better in and for example if it's a hotel maybe it's an amazing spa that really really stands out or maybe you have a state-of-the-art technology or maybe you specialize in designing a family um events and that this is where you excel so down maybe two or three pillars as we say in order to help you define your niche you know what i would say as well pauline for people sometimes you don't realize what what great things you've got at your venue or whatever you do you know if you're a, you're a company and the things you do you don't quite realize it because you become used to it so look at what your customers are saying in testimonials and clients are saying to you because they will tell you what your niche is i guess absolutely and you know when it comes to content strategy of course let's say if you have a hotel and you have a spa and you have a great restaurant and you have meeting rooms okay you have everything but so does everybody else but you have something that is different that is unique that you can really really create great content and, and lure people in so that they can discover and then maybe they can do more business with you it's all about knowing your niche so uh, let's you know let's continue on with that influencer that we were talking about and way this could also be a travel agency specializing in backpacking but let's just talk about the influencer because i wanted you all to learn from the influencers okay we have this girl she has a passion for backpacking on the budget on the left hand side something really really important that she needs to do is she needs to define her persona or the target audience or the client that she wants to reach and on the right hand side what she needs to do is she needs to define what content what advice what value she will be um delivering to to these people and this is what you have to do every single one of you no matter if you're a venue agency hotel event planner so when it comes to this particular person she knows that she's targeting young women based in britain that are looking for holidays on a budget we can straight away feel like maybe students young women but this is her audience and even though she travels all over the world her content is targeted or is mm, designed especially for for those uh, yeah. young women in, in britain and then on the right hand side you know she has a plan what does she want to write about what does she want to um you know uh, write about so that the, the audience will find it valuable and we know from the research we have done that the people want good ideas they want travel ideas they also want some tips where to stay and they want to feel inspired and i just want to say to everybody you know you can do this research on a sort of secondary basis you can pay someone for a report but the best way is to ask your clients or your followers at the moment or representation of your followers like you um uh, Niall, you i saw you and you know asking and engaging what do you guys want to see how yeah. often do you want to see it you know and um, so this is really really important to understand that to understand what your audience want and and they want two things really they want value now that value can be educational that value can be uh, entertainment as well you know there's loads of pages that have funny videos and they have millions of followers and they also want consistency and the best way to sort of show you what i mean with the consistency is imagine if you were watching a grace anatomy show and you were waiting for that show every week on wednesday and then all of a sudden they would just take it off air for two weeks. You know, wouldn't you feel annoyed? You wouldn't be really into it. So maybe, um, Niall, if you don't mind, let's run a poll number two. Yep, done. Do you know why your audience should follow you and what is in it for them? Like right now, honestly, think about your Instagram page and all the content that you're putting out there. Do you know why they come to follow you there? Can you yep. honestly say that? So wh okay. what does it say? We're initially getting a hundred percent of people know are saying yes, they know what's in it for they them, know. they know what their audience, yeah. They know, yeah. okay. Um yeah. so what I would say, and from working with some of the best influencers, is keep asking, keep researching because things change and people are needing different things. Um so keep on top of that and keep researching and keep asking people what's in it for them and and you know why they want to follow you. Can um, I just ask you a quick question on that, yeah, Pauline? Um, you you might uh, you might come to this later on, but 
is it also, I mean, do you, do you sometimes need to shake it up and do different things as well? You know, not just keep repeating the same things over and over again. But, you know, I know I know you're not saying show the same picture over and over again, but I mean, just mean, you know, do you, do you have to think outside the box slightly sometimes? Absolutely. And you have to experiment as well. And, and that's really, yeah. really key. But you have to understand if I follow your Instagram page, what do I want to get out of it? It's yeah. a reverse psychology. It's not what, what you as a content creator or a, or a business want to show your followers. You have to reverse psychology and think what they want to, to, to see. Yeah. To, you know, to yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. So uh, we're going to come back to the consistency. This is just a picture of, of the audience. Remember, we had that um, influencer backpacker. So this is some of her audience, young girls, as I said, maybe getting the passport and wanting to travel. So. Yeah. And also how it works in the influencer world, when we have the backpacker, she produces all of that content with value and she has her very, very well-defined niche, she can actually attract branded deals. Now, Regatta Outdoors, you know, maybe most of you know this brand. It's a brand for sort of outdoors and it really fits in with the agenda of this influencer. And this is exactly how the deals are being done online on social media. When the influencer has a very strong brand, a very well-defined niche, know exactly who the client is, you can attract uh, some brands and on the basis of, you know, sharing the same values. And we'll go back later to it because we're going to talk about working with influencers should you should you not but i just want you all to keep that in mind that it's a lot about the branding and aligned values okay and okay. um, the other thing that people are asking me oftentimes and again from working with an influencer who had over three hundred thousand reach was a busy mom had three different businesses people always used to say like when do you find the time to produce content and content is not only the pictures the blog post, it's the webinar we are doing today. Like, how do you even find the time? Most yeah. influencers would find one day a week, they would put on their makeup, they would plan their content, they would write their blog posts, and then they would plan it across the week. And this is what we really, really have to understand, that this has to be strategized and planned. And it is a business strategy. Of course, when it comes to stories, for example, on Instagram, you can share something behind the stages or something random. But don't be afraid of this whole content creation. A lot of people are annoyed. A lot of people are scared of that. It's all about planning, booking a day. It's, if once a week is uh, not feasible for you because you're busy with your business, once a month, write three blog posts, do some pictures, you know, and plan it on the content calendar. Can I just jump in there as well? Absolutely, guys. guys there, there is, um, there is software as well. Uh, there is a web page, uh, Creator Studio by uh, Facebook, which you can schedule um, Instagram main posts and also post to your pages as well, and you can schedule those um, in advance. So just search on Facebook Creator Studio, and you're, it allows you to do to do both of them and set it all up in you know in one go. So as Pauline's saying there, you know, it's a good way of um, you know, doing these things in advance and having a strategy. Exactly, because otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have time. We're all busy business people. We have to meet in real life and we have to work. And then the social media content life also has to happen. So if you're a smaller business, you cannot hire someone to do this for you. The planning and the calendar is crucial. And the consistency is the only one word that you really, really need to be worried about because this is exactly how you grow on social media online with content. and. Yeah. And with that consistency, you know, um, when you have a plan, are you sharing something throughout the month? But there are also some trends online that you need to react to and you need to constantly research. Like, for example, last summer, a huge trend within the travel industry was vacation. Yeah. Another trend right now that is taking over is Bridgerton event. And from the Netflix show Bridgerton, and I'm sure if we were not in the global pandemic right now, we would have seen way more events with that Bridgerton high society English um, era. So I think that will come back maybe in the summer. But if yeah. someone was posting about it and that was a trend, even though you had a plan of content, you still should tap into those trends and that's why i said you have to research them because some of the trends are global well known like staycation and some of the trends will be less known but might be uh, actually important for your target group 
So the best way I find when I'm looking for trends is typing into Google, typing into YouTube, or actually searching on TikTok, various challenges, various trends, yeah. just to get you know those content ideas. And um, you all remember Bernie Sanders here. The Kerala tourism has jumped on that trend. It was viral. They jumped right on it. They used him in their um, marketing campaign, and it looks amazing. Now, I want to ask everybody, why do you think or do you feel that this is important? Like, what business can you get out of putting Bernie Sanders on your Instagram, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and the truth of the matter is that because this is a global trend, if you use the right hashtags, people who are into this trend might discover you without actually necessarily looking for your business or for your hotel or for your destination. But because you participated in this trend and they were checking out the trend, they came across the Kerala tourism, which is, by the way, how I came across them. So, <laughs> so it works. <laughs> so it works. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I saw somebody did uh, put Bernie on the in between uh, Meghan Markle and Oprah last night as well. That made me laugh. My gosh, are you serious? It's so funny. Did you know that he actually used um, this trend, and I think he produced a number of T-shirts and sold it and raised like millions for charity. So well oh, done. Oh really? <laughs> well done indeed. So I was just going to ask you then, um, just coming back to what you were talking about, social media channels, um, TikTok. Um, you know what started out as maybe not what it's developed into it's you know it's developed into a, a tool for businesses now would you say absolutely 100 percent. you have um shopify now hooked up and i'm sure it's just going to develop and develop more and more of course yeah. uh, instagram is trying to uh, compete and we're going to talk about reels actually as well because whenever a social media um uh, uh, sort of introduces a new feature and i'm sure you know that as well nail they yeah. sort of want you to use it and they push that content if you use it because they want users to to, to you know to use it <laughs> yeah and you, they, they at the beginning they allow you to be successful and get some good reach with them don't they so that you keep using it more and more and very organic reach as well yeah. so you know let's let's run a poll um okay. U, UGC this is a user generated content and I want to ask you have you ever used a user generated content you know either pictures or videos or stuff like that at, at, um have you ever used it in your in do you want to ex do you want to explain that a little bit more because it's it's not okay. just pictures it's not just pictures you take it's it's other people's pictures of your products and things like Absol that isn't it absolutely you're right you're right so user generated content is content that other people took that included your business or where about your business. And the easiest way that I can show that is with, imagine a hotel, uh, someone comes in to stay, takes a lot of pictures, tags you, it's them making the content about you. And it is so public these days and all over social media that there are actually strategies how to use it and reshare it. So, you know, very, very simply, have you ever used it as an agency? And I know there's a lot of security issues as well, because when you do a big event, sometimes the clients don't want you to, to, to you know, to use the yeah. pictures. But still, yeah. have, you, have you ever used it? Ha, ha, have you guys ever reshared the content that someone else made about you? Yeah, you know what, I think it's, um, and a really good, I'm sure you're gonna come onto this, a really good tip is, um, for especially for hotels and venues, to, you know, to make something that is Instagrammable, like you know, have a statue or a picture or an image or something. I think they're the kind of they're the kind of ways people can actually make it happen, isn't it? Isn't it? I, we we were actually opening a car business for a client here in Ireland, and it's just a you know a, a used car business on the inside, dedicated yeah. to young people. And the first thing I said, the very first thing I said, you need to have a selfie spot something pretty, pretty cool, so that when people come into this amazing space that you invested so much yeah. money in, that they can get excited and take pictures. And it's exactly what you're saying. You need to, and you need to show people where to do it, and they need to have this incentive to then tag you. So absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, so how's yeah. the poll? Ha have people been using it? The poll it? is, yeah, we've got 10, um, here we go, 63%. So it's two thirds, two thirds of the people um, have been using it, and a third haven't. So, guys, I hope you know if nothing else, you're going to take away from this. Um, you know, and this, this, this means this. You can apply this to event organizers as well. You know, when you're doing an event, totally. have something outside, outside the entrance to the to the hall or to the exhibition 
you know, you always see it, people with the big light up letters and the big graphics so that people will come and then take photos and hashtag it and everything. So it's quite and easy to do. But even when you were doing your Christmas party, you had this activity, I remember, when people were able to get involved and do like yeah. virtual pictures. This is, also user, yeah. this is also user generated content. So you can do it virtually as well. Um, and it is really, really cool because you have so much um, content then, you know, that you can turn around pre event, post event, but also in terms of marketing a venue or a destination. So I use it for flashback things, you know, flashback to a year ago today, we did this and you can get so much life out of it. I mean, you know, we, we do that a lot. We, we do a lot of flashback. We do a thing called time machine where we go back to something we did. So yeah, definitely guys, you know, take advantage of that. It's one really good takeaway Pauline from, from this show. Absolutely. And I play around with it. Uh, later on, I will show you a tool that is a tool for destinations as well to, yeah. to play around with user generated content. So, so um, would this be a good point for us to jump in and then go to the second half in a second? We've got, we've got the DW live show panel, which uh, you guys can't miss. Would this be a good time, Pauline, or do you want to carry on for a little bit longer? We're right in the middle, so let's take a break and have the panel, and then we're going to come back. Let's go for it. Okay, so I'm going to put Callum on the spot now. Um, with <laughs> a bit ahead of time, um, ready to show you our latest DW Live Show panel. This is a funny one, guys. Look out for this killer question. Hey Neil, it's Rob Howarth here from Event Safety Plan. This week I've just been inspired by all of those people who are working behind the scenes to get the vaccination programme out and the amazing job that they're doing. We often wait for kindness, but being kind to yourself can start now, said the mole. Charlie Maxey is someone who inspires me at the moment. He's got this amazing book. Um, if you haven't seen it or got it already, I recommend you get it. And he posts on his Instagram inspirational quotes that really help you think about things. Hi, Delegate Anglers. I'm taking inspiration from many places at the moment, and I've been reading quite a lot uh, throughout uh, the whole of the lockdown, which has been great, and learning about habits and different ways of working and listening. And I'm taking a lot of inspiration from people in the events industry and trialing new ways of working. And it's been great watching all these shows, you know? And I suppose if uh, all else fails, I can't always just turn to the alcohol. You So the person that inspires me most throughout my life is my dad, which sounds so wishy-washy, but um, he ran a business from when I was five to about 15. He retired at 50 um, and put lots of the money that he um, got for when he sold the business into a charity, which I am now trustee of. He unfortunately passed away eight years ago, uh, but he will always forever be my hero. And I just hope that I make him proud. So yeah, that's my inspiration. I tried to come up with something a lot more fun, but at the end of the day, that's the truth. Thank you for all our DW live show panel people there and really touching one from Kate at the end. Um, if you guys want to get involved in joining in with the panel, we've always got a place for you. We're always looking for new people on the show as well. Um, and also, if you've got any questions that you'd like us to ask uh, the panel, you know, that are a bit of fun, that are a bit insightful. You know, we asked a mixture of serious and kind of less serious questions. Um, but we'd love you to get involved, guys, because it's, it's really good fun and we, we love putting them together. We really enjoy it. So um, back to the show. Pauline, where were we? We were just up to user-generated content. Can you see my screen? I think so, yes. Yeah, so, um, so far, you know, I just want to go through what we've covered. So imagine yourself as a business owner, um, hotel, venue, um, agency, you have a clearly defined niche that you can really sort of 
stand out in the crowd in the ocean with busy fishes you know you're that colorful little fish swimming in between and really showing off and so then you have your target persona you are experimenting you're very very consistent you know what you're doing you are using some user generated content and then a question comes in should you work with influencers okay right yeah and i say yes totally and i will explain why in a minute but i also okay. believe that you should be working really really hard towards becoming your own influencer because in today's digital age you can become your own sort of broadcasting almost authority so being a business is one but being that broadcasting authority or a media channel is also really really important and it needs to be combined and back in the day if you wanted to learn about travel travel tips where to travel to maybe something about lisbon or maybe something about milan you had to buy a travel magazine and you had to rely on the content that yeah. some journalists you know wrote about the national geographic whatever but right now if you're a hotel or a destination you produce that content so you become an influencer and people who are interested to learn more about milan you know follow your content but why yeah. should you also work with influencers the psychology for following influencers and i've seen you know working with really really big influencers for b2b deals they have the trust from their public from their audience from their community and it is almost as if when they recommend something it's like your sister or your best friend recommends something and we go back to the authenticity we go back to you know values uh, certain influencers have certain values and rarely and i promise you rarely there are influencers who don't know their niche and who would just accept any given deal most of the influencers even the micro influencers the smaller people have really really well defined niche they know what they're doing so if your destination or a hotel or a venue fits in within the brand and obviously the budget as well but within the brand they will work with you so i have yeah. three influencers that i want to show you just three examples these are real people real people that i know that are amazing so are you guys ready let's 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 talk about them they're all travel influencers okay okay so dominica the blonde flamingo a london-based blogger note at the very very beginning she says explicitly here she's a london blogger so straight away you know most of the people following her will be from the uk He's on the sort of a little bit more luxury upper class when it comes to travel. So if you were a four or five star resort or a really beautiful destination that is like Instagram worthy, you could definitely walk with her. If you are a shopping gallery in Milan, and there's actually a picture uh, of her in yeah. Milan here, and you were after targeting these sort of women in the UK who will come over and spend money, this is exactly the right influencer for you, okay? And, and you really have to take that into consideration. When you go via the agency, they take 20%. If you come directly to the influencer, you know, she doesn't, but she might have a, an agency contract in place. And you need to define all your expectations, but give the influencer some creative freedom. And why is that important? Because she knows exactly what her audience likes. She knows exactly what is her style. So if you work with her, you know, tell her what you need, but also give her some creative um, freedom so that she can deliver the content that is high value to her audience. Okay. So again, okay. we can see straight away five star hotel, something a little bit on the luxurious side, very Instagram worthy, very crisp. And then we have Philippa Jackson, and she's a parenting influencer, British born, Canada living. She posted that into her profile. I think she would probably work within two markets. So if there is a brand from UK or a brand from Canada, I think she could actually work with both of them. And she also, you know, posts about her lifestyle and about her travels, but it's very, very different to the one of Dominica, you know. She, Philippa, as you see, she is traveling with her children. So if you were a resort that had great facilities for kids, for parents, this is exactly the influencer that you need to work with. If you are an event planner that actually specializes in like birthday parties for children, you can see this really cute picture over here in the middle, you could actually work with them or maybe gender revealing uh, parties, stuff like that. So you see exactly what we, what we did here. We adjusted your um, business 
to the branding of the influencer. And I know like here around 90,000 is like a medium influencer, but even if for someone who had a 2000 micro influencer, it's the same sort of rationale you need to really do your research and know what her audience is, what she stands for, and if you can fit in. And just to show you female event planners, because we actually are also influencers, we, we help with B2B marketing, but we also have some clients and we also create content. We're a smaller influencer because we are very, very B2B defined. But at the same time, you know, um, we work with some people in the events industry. So, so three example, you know, this is B2C, this is also B2C, we are B2B, and depending on your needs, this is who you need to work with. Just, and when just, on, just on that, uh, Pauline, I think for event organisers as well, you know, we've got a perceived um, very glamorous life as well at times, you know, <laughs> going to do great events and behind the scenes and travelling and so you know pick up as many content many bits of content as you can i would say as well oh totally you know, yeah you know i had this event last night these are the pictures of the event that we did last night in virtual reality for international women's day and we used zoom and we got hacked uh, at the very very beginning and you know i was really really stressed and today i was thinking to myself you know what this is the event planner life what i'm going to do is i'm going to go online and create content about safety and security and my experience i'm going to share behind the stages because as you said it's not glamorous it's not yeah. glamorous it's difficult we actually spoke about that before we went uh, live this is something that can happen and you know what it's the value that you want to show to share with your with your community you know? yeah. Yeah, has that absolutely. ever happened to anybody you know we don't have a pool planned but um, I'm sure, you know, safety, security with virtual events, there's hiccups like on real events and it's really, really stressful, but you just have to deal with it. It's happened to us. I've just got a, I've just got a quick question there from Sarah. Um, hi, yeah. Sarah. How do you find influencers? You know, is there a place to go? And can I back that up as well with saying, is it a really costly thing to do as uh, well? so depending okay because influencers have their own uh, price structure and you do have to respect that because they are business people uh, one of the influencers that i was working with and now she was very sought after parenting influencer around 350k uh, followership on instagram uh, for one story she was charging 1000 uh, pounds for one wow. story frame, but she worked with huge brands. We, we, we're talking yeah. about Lego, we're talking about Pandora, yeah. those brands that can actually afford huge awareness. But if you actually contact people like ourselves, just for example, you know, I'm not promoting here myself, but just to give you some reflection, we're way cheaper, okay? And the, <laughs> same, and the same with smaller influencers. So find people in your within your industry, do some research who are like maybe 2,000, 3,000, but have really, really engaged community. Engaged, yeah, I agree. Enga engaged uh, community is sometimes, you know, as well, these people with these huge numbers haven't got, you know, some of them, I'm not going to say the false, yeah. but some of them yeah. might not be all fully engaged. Oh, totally. Um, so there the, mic the, well. micro, the micro influencers has a lot more, you know, they're called micro influencers because they're really highly engaged people with that audience. So, you, you know, every post is going to be a hit. And you can measure the engagement um, rate. And if you are yeah. working with a good influencer, no matter big or small, ask them for an influencer card. On the influencer card, there should be all of their numbers, all of their stats, including the engagement rate, which is the number of posts slash the number of comments, which gives you some indication of engagement rate, the prices. Be very, very upfront. And remember yeah. that it's always better to work on a longer partnership slash ambassadorship deal because then an influencer will be able to negotiate some prices then you have more power because you're working with that person for longer and yeah oh. there's more strategy as well isn't there you know they might you know they won't just go well here's something that somebody's paid me for i'm going to present it it's something that they might you know they might keep coming back to that hotel or keep and coming working with that car company or whatever you know every now and then and, and i think it seems more organic doesn't it as well have to be true to yourself because for example like uh, i'm partnering with hubilo and in i like what they're doing because i'm very techy i'm very into marketing and so on and so forth you have some great partners on the show as well because you believe and you you've always you always say you believe in what they're doing they're doing great stuff so that's what i mean you have to be authentic and and things have to match here as well so yeah absolutely that would so, be so my just, advice. just to go back to Sarah, sarah's question though how do you do you find them? Is there a place like agencies to go to or is there anywhere to look? There are agencies. 
there are agencies, yeah, one of the best agencies in UK is called Whaler, uh, but yep. they might be expensive. So you're yeah. just going to have to do some research. And actually, this is a very good idea for content. I might do a blog post with some influencers that I know, but you just have to do some research. You know, there are agencies, there are platforms, there are tools. But as I told you, agencies always take 15 to 20%, yeah. so they might be more expensive. You might actually find influencers who are a little bit more on the positive, costly side. Oh, there is also a word of mice, Mariska Costello. So I think she has the first business in the industry that actually helps with finding um, mice influencers. Yeah. So, you know, you have you can ask me also. I know a lot of influencers. So, you know, sh fire away. And Perfect. So, so we'll, we'll get all that information from you and we'll put it in the wrap-up, guys. So if you guys want to check it out or contact Pauline about it, that would be, uh, that'd be the best way to do it, I guess. Exactly. No problem. So we are still talking about influencers before we go into sales funnels. These are few of the key, key, key secrets that I did not know that I learned from working with influencers. And this is something that and, and you and I said it at the very, very beginning. Whenever a social media platform introduces a new tool, like, for example, uh, Instagram has introduced Reels to re rival TikTok, if you use it in your content marketing, they will promote it more than a stack of picture. So yeah. please, you know, take that way with you that whenever there is a new tool, and the same with new social media platforms, but especially new tools, that will give you some traffic. Be super strategic with the hashtags. Don't just use some boring hashtags like travel, travel Tuesday. You know, <laughs> what's very like good for your niche? Around 100K, you can see how many followers a particular hashtag has. So don't choose small hashtags, but around 100,000 in traffic would be very, very good and experiment and change them up and use them. Be very, very strategic with the hashtags. And the last thing, which is actually what myself and the Delegate Wranglers are doing today, collaborate. Find someone in your industry um, that is doing something similar or something that you can relate to and do content together. When you go for IMAX as an event planner, as a venue, right? You have a stand like <clears throat> Scotland or Visit Britain, or oftentimes when I was a host at Vire, a hotel would tell me about this awesome restaurant or like an awesome club <clears throat> because they work together. And that's exactly what you have to do on social media too. So don't think this is a lonely game of you promoting your business only or you promoting only your hotels. Collaborate, collaborate and engage with people. And again, this is exactly what, what we're doing today, isn't it, Neil? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've got a couple of questions as well. One is, one's from me and one's from Rita. So I'll ask Rita's first. Hello, Rita and all the guys on YouTube. Please keep sending your questions in. Um, is there a hack of how to find a good influencer for your business? Or is it a matter of kind of trial and error or, you know, having a look what some of these agencies are doing? Is there any kind of short way to kind of know, know the right person? No. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, okay. I will take, I will tell you from a personal experience, one of my clients that I am an ambassador of, we have building, uh, we have been building a relationship between us for two years. There was trust established. There was me participating in podcasts and different things before, uh, you know, a deal. So it's, I don't think there is like a one strategy or whatever. Um, obviously, always go by recommendation. Yeah. So someone else, uh, do a lot of research. Like once you do it, once or twice, you will really get the hang of it if someone is professional or not. There's plenty of articles online as well. Read up, uh, see something on Facebook. You can, and if you're really, really scared and you have a big budget, okay, yeah go through the agency you will have that peace of mind because you will have the contract and by the way yeah contract even though if you're a small business and you're only paying 200 euros have a contract in place yeah. a professional contract what's expected of the influencer how he should deliver and um, give her some or him a freedom of content creativity but have a contract in place this is business yeah and i think as well um it's a difficult, quite a difficult thing to measure. It's not like you're just going to pay and you're going to guarantee that you're going to get all these visits to your website or whatever as a result of this, um, an influencer. But, you know, it's not just about that, is it? It's about visibility, brand and awareness, I, it lots is of actually, other things. It is actually the other way around. It's not about yeah. clicks whatsoever. It's about visibility. It's about creating trust. It's about 
creating your warm traffic, which I will yeah. show you in a minute what that is, but it's more for visibility. And of course, you know, you can argue that people who are working for big brands have, you know, they're using influencers because they have the yeah. budgets and maybe the smaller guys don't have that so much. But if you don't have a big budget, do something that I said here at the very end, at least collaborate with others so that you can promote my content and I can promote your content and we'll both win even though no money is being exchanged. I think that's a really important point to mention though, guys. You know, the Pauline's just made and it's brilliant. Don't just do these and think you're going to get instantly, you know, if you're going to work with an influencer, don't think you're instantly going to get hundreds of clicks and hundreds of visits. It doesn't work like that. It's the other way around. Exactly what Pauline's just said there. Yeah, so really yeah. It's really important to know that. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, um, I'll let you crack on. I've got a couple more questions, but go on, I'll let you carry on. Okay. Let's leave the influencers behind and let's uh, go through the last very, very, very important uh, part, which is a sales funnel. So we're all businesses. We're all promoting online. This is a sales funnel designed by a company called Tribe 47. And they are one of the best companies when it comes to designing these sales funnels and, and teaching the companies how to do it. And you, you can see here on the left hand side that you have the various traffic sources. So let's think about a hotel creating an ad over on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and so on and so forth. And you want to land that traffic on a landing page. Okay. So you pay for, a, for an ad, you promote something, you land them on a page. Traditionally, a few years ago, you would land them on a sales page. So let's just think about a hotel again, you know, 20% off, amazing holidays, and you straight away land them on a sales yeah. page. So Tribe 47 and I agree that you should use content first in your sales funnel or content strategy in order to land them on that content and then to progress with the sale. And I, as I said, I want to give you loads of value. So I was thinking about the situation that is happening in UK. And let's use an event planning example. Uh, summer is coming. Spring is coming. You might have the opportunity to this summer to make some money by organizing outdoor events for corporates, right? Maybe some barbecues, 40, 50 people. You know, people are really tired. They really want to do some networking. This could be a good opportunity for you. So instead of just pushing them into book this great event with us, summer barbecue, 20% off. What could you do? Well, you could do something here with that content. I highlighted that in pink. When you bring the traffic that you paid for or warm traffic, you know, from Instagram, people who follow you, you bring them to this content. You don't bring them to the sale. And how does that look like, you know, content first sales funnel? Okay, once more, we have the ad on Google, on Facebook, we paid for it or we didn't pay for it, we just posted it on Instagram. But instead of landing people on sale, we land them on content. And here are some examples of the content would include 10 summer corporate outdoor barbecue ideas, download our guide. That's the first piece of content that they come over and they can read. Or a case study. How Pepsi hosted the best outdoor uh, barbecue for staff. And by the way, if you choose a case study, don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be your case study. There are so many case studies or articles written how, you know, people did something successfully or companies did something successfully. You could just use that case study, obviously, you know, a reference or uh, rewrite it in, 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 in your way, but reference, reference, reference. But it's just a case to show how another company could have an amazing result yeah. doing something that your agency could do. Or you could say free webinar, safety during corporate barbecue, uh, barbecue um, this summer. And I know a lot of event professionals and I've seen a lot of questions actually coming in on Delegate Wranglers. You now people really asking, you know, is this okay? How do we do this with COVID, safety? You know, so providing some value and just the very last thing, even if you're doing a webinar, you could actually give them some, um, maybe some tips at the beginning so that you can warm them up first and then push them into webinar yeah, sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
let's just see again, you know, now that I've explained this, let's look at this sales funnel again. So you have your traffic sources coming in from the paid ads or warm traffic, maybe your database. Your database is your warm traffic. Warm traffic is basically people who know you and know about you. Cold traffic is people who don't know about you. You paid for the ad and they come in as a cold traffic. So both warm and cold traffic, they come in, they come in on content. And this is really, really important because up until now, we spoke about taking photos for social media. But now we're talking about sales. We're talking about driving sales and then pushing people down the sales funnel. And this is a strategy of its own. But I want you to, to remember that this is also where you can use content, where you write quality yeah. content to, to really generate sales. Okay. Yeah. Great stuff. Love it. Great stuff. <laughs> Great. Glad that you do. And why am I talking about this content in the sales funnel? Well, it's because people don't go on social media with the intention to buy something. They don't. They go on social media with the intention to be inspired or educated or be entertained. And even though, you know, you can sell physical products or Instagram on Facebook, but even Instagram and Facebook says that you should present those products in a lifestyle like images. Meaning that if I am an influencer and I work with Pandora and I'm promoting the ring, I don't just show you a picture of the ring. I show you a picture of myself with my boyfriend having a great time. He's giving me this ring. It's yeah. a story. It's a beautiful story. And the same with, you know, a corporate barbecue. Show a story. Don't just show a barbecue. Show a story of a company having a great time. It's the lifestyle. And if you educate people or if you inspire them or if you entertain them, they might be inclined to buy something from you. Yeah. And it was exactly the same if you think about a few years ago when you had a travel magazine, you read um, maybe a piece about Lisbon and at the end of the magazine, there were some special offers. Yeah, yeah, always. I, having, <laughs> having read that and discovered why Lisbon should be your top 10 choices, blah, 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 you're like, hmm, okay, maybe I should, I should go. And then you discover this coupon and you feel like, oh, if only, so if, if only there was a cheap <laughs> offer for me to go, I would have gone to Lisbon. Yeah. Exactly. I, and I totally agree. Yeah. And, and even when we're talking about the funnel, you know, okay, you have the content at the beginning. There's a lot of retargeting here. You can retarget and you can uh, show up in their email. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a master class in, in, in itself. You know, we should do another master class on building funnels. But yeah, definitely. We will do. <laughs> I'd like, I'd love to. But, but this is all, all about content, you know? And as I said, warm traffic is really, really important. Warm traffic is what matters in building a community on social media, but also building your database. I will never forget my marketing teacher from Spain saying to me, you know, Paulina, no matter what happens with technology, your number one most important marketing tool is your database. You own it, yeah. it takes it away from you. Of course, GDPR, cleaning data, really, really important, making sure people are right. opting in. You know that the stuff and the nail yourself. But it's yeah. a warm traffic, meaning that people already know you. And when you're inviting people uh, from the Delegate Wranglers to join the show, it's easier, right, than promoting the show to people who don't know you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, somebody, somebody told me, um, and I've probably said this on the show before, but when you're making posts on social media as well, don't just always try and sell them, sell them things, you know, oh. maybe give them one for them, one for you, and one behind the scenes or something, you know, 20%. that kind of thing. 20% yeah. should be selling, if not more. And yeah. people have different, you know, you can share the product. You know the gift boxes, now that they're really, really popular. There is amazing content of people actually packing those gift boxes and showing people how it looks like, but it's not selling. It's just really, really soothing to see how they pack up the boxes. Part of the journey. You're being part oh, of the journey. And, it's beautiful, yeah. but it's not selling. And then you have your cold traffic, and your cold traffic usually comes from the ads, from the paid ads. You don't know these people. And, of course, you should do that too should use both but have warm traffic building your community building your content building your um, database as the first of your agenda as i said invest in building your community and database for one traffic otherwise you're paying for that uh, which yeah. you should do but you see why i've actually highlighted it in such big letters and then the ppc campaigns only in <laughs> yeah yeah okay so Perfect. We're coming back to, to nearly the end of our of our um, show, and I just wanted to give you, as I said, a, a few value. 
Oh, by the way, we were supposed to do um, another poll. I did it. Have... I did it. Yeah. Okay. So we asked, um, have you ever used uh, ever used content, articles, videos with value at the start of your sales funnel? Um, Sixty-seven percent, so two thirds of people said yes, and the third said no. Oh wow, guys, you're amazing. You know what yeah. you're doing. You know what you're doing. And, you know, as I said, just experiment with that content because maybe you've always shared an article. Maybe now just experiment with the webinar or maybe experiment with like a little book, experiment with some downloading case studies, just experiment with different content and do A B testing, land them on the webinar, see if they sign up or land them somewhere else. Even if you have a small budget, A B test, A B test. Okay. Just a few tools that I want to recommend personally. You were talking about the scheduling on Facebook. When it yeah. comes to content planner, honestly, a simple Excel sheet sometimes is the best where you actually divide into your days and you just literally say, Tuesday, I'm going to share this. And, and there's then... loads of templates to download, loads. guys. You just and actually, Canva also has that now. Canva also introduced yeah. a content calendar. Um, one of the uh, tools that I honestly love is PicMonkey because I, I'm not such a, um, you know, pro user of... Uh, I haven't of, used uh, that one, PicMonkey. What does Pick, that do? PicMonkey. Um, so it's it's like um, editing your pictures, editing your videos that you yeah. can put on social media in all different sizes and shapes. It's like... Um, nice and easy to, to do it. Exactly. It's like Adobe Photoshop, but much easier. I think yep. you need, how much am I paying? 150 euro a, a year to use PicMonkey, which you can use on your desktop and also on your phone. I love okay. it. And I know the influencers use it too. Obviously, Canva is also very, very cool. And yeah. um, again, for planning your calendar, Trello, it's yeah. like, you know, those little... I've got Trello. Yeah, too. I know Trello. Yeah, it's really recommended as well. Really good for tasks. Um, really really good, good for tasks. tasks and especially if you have a team and they can say okay we've completed that task but also for planning content could be good because you can put like links and stuff or, or maybe collecting ideas which also you could do in your excel sheet so you know don't think if you, you don't have to use like superb tools to do it you could literally do it on a piece of paper yeah but just have can. that plan we'll do and something. Then, yeah so you need to invest in equipment. You need to have the light. I have a circle light in front of me, a microphone, uh, which I don't have right now because I'm traveling on business. I'm actually in a hotel right now. I know you guys can't in the UK, but I had to travel to Eastern Europe to, to deliver this event. Um, so I just have that. I would much rather have a professional mic right now. You would have a much better sound. And a picture holder to do your, uh, to do your content. So, you know... Yeah should invest go to amazon there's loads of them some of them are like 20 euros 20 pounds yeah and then the last um tool that i've discovered that i want to share with you is mostly for destinations but if you are a hotel or a venue that work with a destination let them know they're already trending in america and canada and they're called crowd drift and this is something that we spoke about user generated content so you can discover and securely acquire rights to the authentic photos and videos travelers and locals are sharing about your destination every day. Loads of analytics, you know, they've loads of success. They're actually one of the best people that I know at the moment that are doing awesome killer landing pages, loads of webinars. I actually told them about the delegate wranglers. They, they had no idea that you guys existed. <laughs> now they do. Um, oh, they're amazing and they're really, um, they told me last week that they're working with, I think, European Commission of Regions or something like that because they really want to revolutionize how destinations are promoting themselves with user how, how does it work, Pauline? Do they, do, do, would the destination pay to, to pick up all this quality content? It's, it's a it tool. Is? It's a tool. So you do have to pay for it. it it's, yeah. it's a platform. But, you know, go check CrowdRiff, go online, check, check it, it out. out yeah, you know, have a look at it. Yeah. They have loads of little uh, webinars that are just very targeted at user generated content and analytics. And I think because they're mostly working with America and UK, uh, sorry, America and Canada, they have loads of case studies from other destinations, what they were able to do with them, generate a lot of impression. I remember explicitly one example. I think from Visit Colorado, I am not 100% sure, but the guy was saying that their team was two people team and they were able to generate thousands of impressions that normally such a small team would have never been able to generate. So really, okay. I came across them last month. I was like, I have to share with you. Unfortunately, I checked already because I prepared before this webinar. It's not for hotels anymore. They experimented with that. It's for so the just destinations and, and cities and things like that. Yeah. But cool. again, and...
And a very last thing from Hubilo, they're actually organizing this amazing global conference. Uh, Guy Kawasaki, Chief Evangelist of Canva, is their main speaker. This is a conference for event planners about marketing. So this is not how to organize a conference. This is how to use experimental online events in your marketing, in your right. sales funnel, at any stage, and also how to promote your events. Because uh, fair enough, that we're doing these virtual events, but how do you promote it? You will have, as you can see, four plus thousand attendees, great marketeers from all over the world. Many people from the industry, I think Adam Perry is joining. Uh, I think Will Corrin is joining so many people from the industry, but also outside the industry. And like, how often can we as event professionals hear Guy Kawasaki talking to the industry? Fantastic. It's, I mean, is that a pay? Is it? Do you, is there a charge to go, or is it a free event? Do we know? I think it's. I actually think it's free event. I haven't seen anything about paid. And when I registered, I only got the notification that they had my name, and there was at any point I had never seen any any payment. Yeah, um, I think we should all check that one out, guys. It looks. Um, that looks amazingly useful the restart um, 2021 23rd 24th of march guys at hubilo you know they it's a good company they've raised some funding recently and yeah. i think they really want to play back to the industry and do something for us um and i love guy kawasaki i have his book about the enchantment and when i saw his picture i was like yeah <laughs> my dream came true i would Fantastic. also I would also like to hear Melanie Perkins, you know, the CEO of Canva that, that he worked with because it's an amazing story of a young Australian woman. I think she's 33 yeah. years old creating yeah. this global company. I'm sure he's going to mention her. So that's it. And Maybe. that's it, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to find me, just add me on LinkedIn. Uh, Female Event Planners is our community on Instagram where we have a mission to educate, especially females in our industry, but not only. But again, this is my niche that I've chosen. Um, I'm a female. I was a young female starting in the business. I wanted to give back and share some of the digital marketing knowledge. But it's it's a page where all of you are very, very welcome to join, to collaborate with me, to say hello. I'm actually working full time as a marketeer as well. Um, so this is something that I do on the side yeah. that I'm very, very passionate about. And I would I love people. So connect with me. <laughs> Well, Pauline, that has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, really, really, really enjoyed it. So many great takeaways and so many things. Um, we've just got a couple of last quick questions. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, aware, I'm aware, guys, we're up with time. Um, one from Sophie Robinson. Um, how important is it to have a blog on your website? We can just give some quick answers to these. Very important. But uh, when it comes to blog, make sure that the blog is really really good so if you don't have that much time it's better to post every every two weeks once rather than trying to i'm sorry for my expression create a shitty content neil papel is the best marketeer in the world when you go on google and you type in marketing he comes in and he produces quality content he recently yeah. said during a webinar that the team constantly goes in and rewrites <clears throat> the articles so if, yeah. if let's see if he posted something about social media, like a blog, and now you have Clubhouse, and now you have this. So the team has to go and add more information. So blog, yes, but make sure full of knowledge, full of keywords as well, just really, really knowledgeable. And again, when we spoke about a niche, the more niche, the better, so that people can discover you. And if you don't have that much time, once a month, twice a month, yeah. just so that it can be full of value. Totally agree. A bit better to have 50 people listening to you intensely than 2,000 people not listening to you at all. Exactly. In terms of the niche. A um, couple more questions. Um, one from James Dowson. And I think, hi, James. I think I know the answer to this one. How concerned are you about GDPR these days? Um, I mean, I think he means um, in respect to you know, gathering data from, from funnels and things like that. We just need to make sure we're following the best practices. Of as always, course. Don't we? You know? Oh, my God. And of course, you have to follow best practice and you have to clean your data as well and make sure that when they give you the data, it's for a particular purpose, you know. And um, when I was working with uh, another client, we were promoting cars. We constantly had to make sure that anybody who bought a car from that business it still wants to be on the database. There's a lot of tools and you constantly have to you know re-educate yourself and get permissions yeah totally agree. I mean, you, go on sorry 
am I am concerned about it. Of course, you should educate yourself, but you know, it's all about permissions and it's all about um, respecting the rules and nobody yeah. perfect. Well, what I would say, what I would say is. You know, stick to your own values on GDPR, guys. You know, you, you might think oh, I've got this list and no one will know if I do this. Stick to we we rigidly stick to only kind of contacting people who said yes to wanting to know more information or who signed up for an event. We are like hundred percent all the time about this. So I think it's just a matter of you know and always sticking give to your them, own values. And always give them an opportunity to unsubscribe at, at the end because yeah. even if someone is annoyed that you know he signed up for the event. For this in particular event, and maybe Niall will send you another email asking, do you know, guys, do you want to um, uh, use or do you want to um, attend another uh, class uh, room or masterclass? And you say, well, I don't. I think I was reading somewhere as well that if you are genuine, if if you had a genuine um, idea or concern for contacting the person because she attended one webinar and you genuinely believe you have a business in asking yeah. her again for another one, that can also be justified. So just making sure that they can unsubscribe always, always, always. Always. And the very last, if you can give me a quick answer to this one from another question from Sarah. Has Insta Stories got a place in B2B marketing? Absolutely. 100, 500%. And um, so you should be experimenting with every single thing, with IGTV, with Insta guides, with feed, with stories, because you really reels. do get reels, yep. because yep. you really do get different pair of eyes. On, on different and I actually get the most engagement on my stories. One other thing that I will mention very, very quickly, you know on stories when you have those stickers, you can do a poll, you can ask yeah, a question. Yeah. Instagram, in, exactly, Instagram did it on purpose so that you can talk with your audience rather yeah. than just talking at them. So Insta stories definitely, definitely has a place in B2B marketing. Think about it, do it in the way that you can talk to them, use that as an engagement, show behind the stages. Even, yeah. you know, when I do a new post on the feed, I always share to the story and let people know that, hey, check out my feed because I know some people only watch me for stories and some people watch my feed. Different pairs of eyes, engagement, engagement, engagement. Amazing. So that has been oh. absolutely, <laughs> we're going to have to get you on again next season. I'm going to get you on for something else. Awesome. <laughs> now, that was really fantastic. I'd like to say on behalf of me and everybody watching and everybody's going to watch it on YouTube, thank you so much. Um, it was really, really fantastic, really enlightening as well. Really enjoyed it. As long as you guys enjoyed it and found it valuable, um, that's that's all that matters to me. So I wish everybody you know, uh, health safety and may um, god or some other power depending on your religion may we may we all go back to the business the way we were before i wish that for you for myself and for everybody here oh amazing i mean what else can i say thank you paulina that was absolutely brilliant so guys um i'm gonna wrap this up really quickly because i know we're a bit ahead of time a bit over time um, Pauline should be so bloody engaging. That's what it is. <laughs> um, um, we're just going to quickly going to say thank you to everybody for watching, everybody on YouTube, really grateful. Just going to show you what we've got coming up um, in the next few weeks. Um, if, if I can get my screen up in front of me. So we have got um, next week, sorry, this week coming up on Thursday, for anybody who's interested in the um, DW Superstars um, initiative that we've got going. We've got a Grow Your Business webinar. Um, actually talking about some of the things Paulie's been talking about today. We've got a webinar to show you how to help um, help you grow your business and how um, you know DW Superstars can help you to do that. So that's this Thursday. Look out for details on the group or on my uh, LinkedIn page. Um, yeah. And then next week, we've got a health and safety masterclass. Well, it's actually event safety masterclass with Rob Hayworth from Event Safety Plan. So that's going to be amazing. That's going to be about how you're going to get yourselves ready to come back to work, the things you need to think about, etc. cetera. Um, we've got an onboarding for DW new members as well the following week. So that's for anybody who's a new member of the group. And then we've got a sales masterclass with Mandy after that. And then the following week, we've got a time management masterclass. I mean, God, we're, we're, we're solving every problem here, guys. <laughs> so um, I hope you can tune in for all of those. Anyway, I'm going to be really quick. Um, thank you so much to Stream, Events Case, for our season sponsors, Events Air, for all their support. And most of all, to you guys and to Pauline for a fantastic session today and for you guys for watching. And we will see you next week. Have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>